The last time around we asked you to think about the general form of the time-distance relationship for the dipping layer reflection event. And uh, that's usually or often referred to as doing the forward calculation. We'll end up today with, we'll leave you with a problem where you're given data like this and you're going to be asked to determine what the dip of the layer is, the thickness of the layer, and what the velocity is. Uh, we'll assume that you don't actually have a direct arrival, or you can use the direct arrival in the problem to um, uh, give you that, to, to cross-check your calculations. Uh, but at this point, we've only calculated one point. This was a pretty special point. This was the critical point. Uh, this was the point uh, the, where we have the onset of the first critically refracted ray, and you know that the critical refraction then continues on and we also continue to get uh, uh, reflection events as well, supercritical reflections as they're called. So now we're going to consider the general problem of uh, determining the reflection time distance relationship uh, as a function of uh, ref reflection arrival times as a function of the source receiver offset. And again, this is ref often referred to as doing the forward problem. So up to this point, we've uh, emphasized the use of the image point again. We're, we're using this in order to define our path lengths. So we know that if uh, we were looking at a reflection that uh, went down, hit the layer at normal incidence, came back up to the source, that uh, the length of that path would be equal to the length of the line drawn from the image point up to the source. We know that that's uh, two times the thickness of the layer, as we defined the thickness of the layer, a line drawn from the source down to the reflector at normal instance. Um, so we're going to add some receivers up dip because now uh, we don't have symmetry about the source point as we did in the horizontal uh, layer case. We only had to consider one side. But now we have to consider what's happening up dip as well as down dip because we uh, noted that the shortest reflection path was the uh, path that corresponded to an image array that came uh, directly up to the surface, intersected the surface at right angles. This would be the reflection point and the length of this reflection path is equal to the length of the line drawn from the image point up to this uh, receiver. Uh, as for any uh, reflection travel time, we have the length of the ray path uh, drawn from the image point to the receiver being equal to the actual uh, reflection path length. And the use of the image point uh, also helps us, I, th and I think you've seen this, is it helps us locate the uh, reflection point. So this path over here represents the general uh, length of the reflection path. That would be a reflection that comes down to this point and back over to the receiver. So our problem then is to calculate uh, the length of this reflection path, the reflection path length here. We know the velocity here is, you know, we call it V1. And uh, answer the question in general, what is the time distance relationship for the dipping layer reflection? So we're doing the forward problem. Here are a couple other relationships that we should uh, keep in mind. And we know that the apex of the hyperbola is going to be located 2h sine delta in the up dip direction. This would actually be a minus x equal minus 2h sine delta. Uh, this is a right triangle. The length of this side is going to be equal to 2h times the cosine of delta. Delta is the dip of the layer. And uh, so the reflection path length that we have over here for this right triangle, uh, the length of the hypotenuse is just going to be the square root of the length of these two sides of the uh, triangle. So we have uh, abbreviated RPL equal the square root of 2h cosine delta, the quantity squared plus x plus 2h sine delta, the quantity squared. And the travel time then would be equal to just this reflection path length divided by the uh, interval velocity in this layer. So again, emphasize that x, uh, the location of the apex is going to be at x equal minus uh, 2h sine delta in the up dip 
direction. So uh, this is fairly straightforward. Turns out to be a fairly straightforward uh, problem, the uh, time-distance relationship. So this basically is the solution for arbitrary x. So we take a look at a particular reflection hyperbola. We have the apex over here. We know that it's equal to 2h sine delta. If we knew what uh, h and delta were, we could easily calculate the apex time. That's uh, 20.52 meters. The apex uh, distance should be a minus sign again. And the arrival time at the apex, 0 0.0188 seconds. So we have... Um, that information, we could also get the, uh, whoops, excuse me, we could also get the V1 from the uh, uh, direct arrival, solve for the uh, reflection travel times in general. We know that our x apex is located at minus 2h times the sine of delta, and uh, our t apex is defined as, as we've shown here, and uh, in this particular case is equal to 0 0.0188 seconds. So, if we, what we should be thinking about is, okay, we know we have the general relationship for the reflection hyperbola from a dipping layer. We know that it, it's hyperbolic. We, we didn't really emphasize the hyperbolic features of that equation, but we could, uh, you can go back to the horizontal layer reflection case to uh, summarize the properties of the hyperbola. We, we'll not do that now, but we have information if we can measure the apex time, we know that that's equal to 2 times the distance times the sine of the dip. If we can measure the apex arrival time, we know that that's equal to 2h times the cosine of the dip over v1. So we have this information that we can extract from our observations. Can we then, knowing what x apex, t apex are, can we figure out what h and delta and v1 are? So these are data points. This is information that we can extract. We know how it's related to layer properties. We also have another point in here. This would be the intercept time. This would be the arrival time when x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, that corresponds to the shot location. That is the direct up and down time. So we know that that is equal to 2h over v1. Just uh, twice the thickness of the layer divided by the interval velocity. So we have these three pieces of information and we could get V1 from the direct arrival but the problem that we'll pose for you will be can you get V1 if you didn't see the direct arrival can you get V1 from these three pieces of information that you measure off the reflection hyperbola. So let's uh, take a look at some of the features of the uh, dipping layer reflection event. Uh, there, there's something that you've probably already noted that uh, doesn't look quite right, and that is that the reflection event should not be coming in ahead of the direct arrival. So this part of the reflection hyperbola shouldn't be here. Why is that? Well, if we take a look at the you know any particular reflection event, it comes from the source to a reflection point up to the surface. The direct arrival comes directly out along the surface to that point. You can see that there's some separation. The distance, uh, same velocity, but the uh, length of the drive, direct arrival path is less than that of the uh, reflection path. So we have some separation as we come up dip towards the intersection of the dipping layer with the surface. Here's another reflection path. Uh, you know, these would be this would be the total reflection path length, and um, we can see that the difference between the direct arrival path and the reflection path is diminishing. These two uh, paths almost have the same length, so we're getting real close over here, we're getting close to this up dip limit. Then once we get beyond this point where the dipping layer intersects the surface, we only get direct arrivals. So we, we shouldn't see any of this uh, reflection path here. 
So what we should see is at this reflection point, we have both, we're at this uh, particular point here, we should see the termination of the reflector, we should see a reflection, a, a tiniest bit of reflection at this particular point. We should see the direct arrival, these two lines have the same length, their arrival times are going to be the same. So they intersect at this particular point that we circled here. The reflection does not continue beyond this uh, X-up dip location. What is X-up dip? Well, X-up dip is just going to be the thickness of the layer divided by sine delta. And you might uh, uh, just take a look at this triangle here and uh, see that that's the uh, case. This X up dip here is just going to be H U over sine of this angle. So we know, know that the uh, sine of delta is just H U over uh, uh, X up dip. So uh, using uh, the numbers that we did to come up with the uh, X apex, T apex, uh, X up dip turns out to be 87.7 meters. Now it's probably unlikely that you'd be able to see this point. If you did, you'd have a piece of information that you could work with. Um, but we do have uh, some maybe some more reliable information. We know it's you, you, you can often see the apex or infer the location of the apex of the reflection hyperbola. So we can get uh, T apex, we can get X apex. Um, we also can see the intercept time, that would be this point over here. So we could also get V1 and V2, but remember for V2, and I haven't shown very much of the critical refraction event over here, but to get V2 we have to go through the process of shooting the forward, um, collecting the uh, forward and reverse uh, refraction profiles. And uh, so there's, there's a lot more labor involved there. So, and the problem that I'm going to leave you with, we're going to assume that we don't know either V1. We don't need to know V2. Uh, we're going to assume also that we don't know uh, V1. So the question is, uh, uh, from, from the data that you see over here, can you determine the dip, the thickness, and the velocity? Assuming that you don't have a clear direct arrival. Now, you could use the direct arrival just to cross-check your uh, results, but can you use these relationships that we have here? Uh, you don't have to use this relationship. You could if you want. Um, but you should be able to do this problem just using these uh, T apex, X apex, and the uh, intercept time. Uh, this is a data set that we haven't worked with, so you'll be coming up with numbers that are different than the ones that we've used uh, just for illustration purposes. So. Um, so I'd say I'd ask that for the next time you, you spend some time and uh, try to figure out these parameters, delta, H, and V1 from the uh, observations. Now this is referred to as the reverse problem. This is what you usually end up doing with your data. You, have, you go out in the field, you collect data, you try to figure out what the properties of the subsurface are. That's the reverse problem. What we just did was the forward problem. We showed that the reflection event associated with the dipping layer is going to have an apex, which is up dip, uh, that it will terminate against the direct arrival, and uh, so on. We came up with these different relationships here, which you can use to figure out H, delta, and V1. So take, uh, take a look at that problem, uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.